Some movie scenes are so hilarious, exciting, or romantic that we go back to watch them again and again and never get tired of them. Then there are the other ones, the unsettling moments and creepy scenes that stick with us even if we only watch them once. Here are just a few of the uncomfortable movie scenes that we'll never ever watch again. In The Nice Guys, Holland March is the worst detective in Los Angeles, maybe even the world. It's just Fred's never been gone this long before. How long has he been missing? Since the funeral. Played by a hilarious Ryan Gosling, March is a bumbling alcoholic who's hired to find a missing adult film star. His quest is filled with all sorts of injuries, both to his pride and his well-being. But the most painful moment comes when he accidentally slits his wrist. At one point, March tries the old PI trick of just wrapping up his hand, punching through a small pane of glass, and reaching inside to unlock the door. But March is no action hero. Needless to say, he immediately regrets it. Granted, the scene is played for laughs, and Gosling does an amazing job selling the comedy. But seeing and hearing all that blood leaves us feeling queasy, and that definitely isn't nice, guys. With a title like Creep, it should come as no surprise that this horror flick is one uncomfortable experience. The film follows an unlucky cameraman named Aaron, who's hired to make a video for a weirdo named Joseph, who claims he's dying of cancer and wants to make a film for his unborn child. But this seemingly sweet idea gets freakier and freakier as Joseph abandons Aaron in the woods, tells him a disturbing tale about his marriage, and performs a song and dance number while wearing a wolf mask. At the end of the day, it's going to be normal, so we'll just... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, that's not going to be anything weird at all. But all that comes after Joseph's first bit of creepiness. Early in the film, he tells Aaron to follow him into the bathroom for tubby time. When Joseph was a little kid, he would take baths with his dad. Since he won't be around to share this with his son, Joseph wants to recreate that experience on film. And yeah, watching from Aaron's perspective as Joseph strips down and starts playing with an imaginary baby in the bathtub is about as awkward and unsettling as it sounds. Then it gets weirder. One moment, Joseph is playing with his imaginary kid, and the next, he sinks into a depression starts talking about suicide and slides under the water like he plans to drown himself. When Aaron leans over the tub to check on Joseph and the madman comes screaming at the camera, it's quite the jump scare and perfectly sets the mood for all the creepiness to come. Steve Carell is no stranger to cringeworthy moments. Been a lot of fun talk about prison today, but I am here to scare you straight. I am here to scare you straight! But after leaving the office, he wound up in more awkward situations in Foxcatcher. This film, based on a tragic true story, finds Carell playing John DuPont, an eccentric millionaire with a fondness for firearms, cocaine, and combat sports. Even though he's incredibly rich, DuPont is still desperate to win the approval of his mother, a cold woman more fond of her prize-winning horses than her own son. Searching for just a tiny bit of praise, DuPont starts a wrestling team in hopes of winning some Olympic gold. Even though he's just a novice when it comes to the sport, he takes control of the class from coach Dave Schultz, played by Mark Ruffalo, and starts giving an inspirational speech to the athletes about representing America and becoming winners in life. Things get especially cringy when he calls one of the wrestlers onto the mat and demonstrates some incredibly basic techniques in an attempt to impress his mom. Eventually, DuPont winds up on the ground with a guy on his back, and that's when his mom leaves with a disapproving scowl. The look on DuPont's face is heartbreaking, and even though he's a manipulative psycho, watching this man humiliate himself will make you wrestle with some complicated feelings. I don't like the sport of wrestling, as you know. It's a low sport. Even by the standards of Quentin Tarantino, The Hateful Eight is full of mean, disgusting moments that will make you squirm in your seat. In fact, it might have the single grossest scene that Tarantino has ever put to film, the poisoned coffee sequence. The Hateful Eight finds a bunch of killers trapped inside a cabin as a blizzard rages outside. Among these shootists and scoundrels, we've got John Ruth, a bounty hunter handcuffed to notorious murderer Daisy DiMurgio. Ruth knows that Daisy has an inside man in the cabin who wants to kill him and set his outlaw boss free, but Ruth never suspects that the mysterious mole would go so far as to poison his coffee. 
After he takes a swig from his mug, he immediately starts vomiting what we can only call extra chunky blood. Really? Nobody got a problem with this. That kicks off a chain reaction in the film, and maybe even the audience. And by the end of it, Ruth is dead, and we're looking sideways at Starbucks for the rest of our lives. You got anything in here besides coffee that can help warm us up? No, the bar is open. Follow moi. <laughs> Annihilation isn't what you'd call a feel-good flick. Directed by Alex Garland, this sci-fi movie deals with some heavy themes like regret, infidelity, and depression. On top of all that, you've got The Shimmer, an alien electromagnetic field that mixes and matches the DNA of any living creature that steps inside its translucent walls. As a result, we're treated to a nightmare world where deformed animals scream like human beings, alligator sharks grow to enormous size, and Tessa Thompson turns into a tree. But the most horrific image inside the Shimmer comes when our heroes discover an old video camera that reveals the fate of an earlier expedition. When they play the footage, we see a wild-eyed soldier played by Oscar Isaac performing some amateur surgery on one of his comrades. That's bad enough by itself, but then we see why. Thanks to the Shimmer's gene-splicing abilities, this guy's intestines have come to life and they're oozing around like some giant worm. It's a scene that starts off sadistic before taking a turn into Lovecraft territory. And no matter how hard you try, you'll never be able to annihilate this moment from your memory. The King of Comedy was the fourth collaboration between Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese. And while it's not as well known as Taxi Driver or Raging Bull, it's definitely the most awkward movie they've ever made. A black comedy about the dark side of show business, the film finds De Niro as Rupert Pupkin, a wannabe comedian who idolizes late-night talk show host Jerry Lanford, played by Jerry Lewis. Rupert thinks if he could just get on Jerry's show and perform his set, then he could make it into the big time. However, Rupert is a delusional creep who fantasizes about being Jerry's best friend. Eventually, the fantasy spills over into reality when Rupert starts stalking Jerry and even shows up at Jerry's mansion completely uninvited. Making things worse, Rupert has brought along a date who has no idea that her psycho boyfriend isn't really friends with the talk show host. Oh, no, no, we just thought we dropped an uninvited for the weekend. <laughs> Slowly but surely, Rupert's date realizes they're not supposed to be in this man's house, and we can totally feel this poor woman's embarrassment. But Rupert just keeps on pretending that he's Jerry's best friend. The whole scene is shudderingly awkward, and it feels so genuinely raw and confrontational because the actors were improvising all their lines. Darren Aronofsky's Requiem for a Dream might be the most traumatic film of all time, and probably the greatest anti-drug PSA ever made. Every moment with Ellen Burstyn as Sarah Goldfarb is just heartbreaking, all building up to the infamous climax where our four main characters experience what it must be like to visit hell. If we had to pick one element of the film that absolutely forces viewers to look away in disgust, though, it could be any scene involving Jarrett Leto's arm. What's the problem? That's my arm. My arm is killing me. Let's have a look at it. Leto plays Harry Goldfarb, a heroin addict whose intravenous drug use causes a vein in one of his arms to become horribly infected. In one of the saddest moments of the film, the arm grows so disgusting that it's amputated during an operation. But before that awful moment, we witness a jittery Harry prepare to shoot up by sticking the needle in his swollen black arm. The injection site is oozing with dark liquid, but Harry jabs that needle into the vein anyway, causing moviegoers everywhere to say no to drugs. The Square is an award-winning satire of the contemporary art world, but it also contains an infamously show-stopping sequence, the Monkey Man scene. It happens at a prestigious dinner party where a muscle-bound artist storms into a room full of wealthy patrons. This guy is hunched over with stilts attached to his arms and he's howling like an ape. He's a performance artist pretending to be a chimpanzee, and at first it seems like fun and games. He waddles around the room, grunts, and amuses the patrons with his eerily accurate chimp impression. But just like real chimps, the artist gets ultra-aggressive incredibly fast, stalking around the room and harassing guests. The terrified patrons keep perfectly quiet and still, but things finally go way too far when he leaps on a table and assaults a female patron, prompting everyone in the room to beat him to a pulp. This insane performance goes on for around 12 minutes, and perhaps it feels so real because Notary actually picked on extras he sensed were nervous whenever he walked by. Don't worry too much, though. The woman he attacked was played by a stunt person who was aware of and ready for the scene. 
The final product is unbearably tense and amazingly uncomfortable, and just like the horror-struck patrons, we don't want to revisit this terrifying experience again. Tusk is not a great movie. It bombed at the box office, it offended critics, and it features one of Johnny Depp's worst performances, which is saying something. There are, however, a couple of killer scenes, and perhaps the most horrifically uncomfortable moment comes when podcaster Wallace Brighton, played by Justin Long, realizes he's missing a pretty important body part. After meeting an eccentric adventurer called Howard Howe while looking for a good story for a show, Wallace drinks some spiked tea and wakes up later in a wheelchair, heavily anesthetized and minus a leg. Still under the effects of Howard's spiked tea, Wallace freaks out when he sees his stitched-up stump, and Howard explains that a doctor had to amputate the limb after Wallace was bitten by a brown recluse. But as tears well up in Wallace's eyes, Howard is trying to hold back laughter. After all, he's the one who cut the leg off as part of a twisted experiment. Tusk is a little tough to watch for a lot of reasons, but in this case, it's on purpose. From its 2001 A Space Odyssey-style opening to its fiery finale, everything about 2013's Under the Skin is eerie. Even though this film has dudes getting sucked out of their skin, however, the most unsettling moment has got to be that awful beach scene. Scarlett Johansson plays an extraterrestrial being who lures men to their deaths, usually by driving around in a van, picking up guys and taking them back to her apartment, where they meet a fate worse than death. In this particular scene, though, Johansson is hunting for prey at a Scottish beach, where she witnesses a woman getting pulled out into the sea. She dispassionately watches the woman disappear into the waves, and she doesn't move to help when the woman's lover drowns trying to save her. In fact, she only reacts after a would-be hero tries in vain to save the couple and is washed ashore unconscious. She drags the man to her van, intent on killing him, and completely ignores the drowned couple's abandoned baby crying in terror on the beach. Johansson's character never feels more inhuman and predatory than she does here, and her cruel indifference leaves a sick, cold feeling in our stomachs. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.